Hello, everybody. All right, I'm going to do a mic check real quick. If you are on the stream, let me know if you can hear me okay. I have a mic set up this time, and I'm hoping that's going to reduce some of the background noise. I could hear a lot of echoes. I know this is kind of an echoey room. Um, I will do some sound proofing at some point, but I don't have that yet, so yeah. Um, doesn't look like anybody is on the stream yet, so I'm just going to talk about whatever I feel like talking about, and I guess I will uh, go ahead and start revealing. Okay, Chris says you can hear me. All right, thank you very much for letting me know. Um, if anybody hears any weird feedback or anything weird happens, just leave a comment in the chat. If I have a question, you can leave questions in the chat. I'm happy to answer them. But first, we're going to reveal what I'm going to be drawing this week. <laughs> uh, so we have our color palette, which is this kind of neat, uh, it's almost a duotone palette because the two browns and the two blues are very very similar to each other so it's kind of fun it'll be I think this week um, I'm not going to use tints or shades so I'm only going to use these four colors I'm not going to lighten or darken any of them because I sort of have a palette that has a good range of lights and darks to begin with so I think that'll be fun um, and then of course furry was the texture that was chosen and bat was the random word that was chosen so it all kind of works together really well which is fun um last week i started doing everything not not completely blind i knew what the results were from the poll but i hadn't planned any poses i hadn't looked up any reference i kind of just started making it which is a fun challenge to do but a what was meant to be sort of a short stream because i want these to be about 30 45 minutes long uh, ended up being an hour and a half long, which I don't want to do. <laughs> Not that I have anything against drawing for that amount of time or spending time with you guys or answering questions. I actually had a ton of fun uh, during that live stream, but I want to be respectful of y'all's time and I want to kind of make sure that I can complete the challenge in a reasonable amount of time. So this week I found a reference image that I'm going to be kind of using to base the pose off of. I might not do this every time, but I felt like I wanted to use a reference image this week. Um, so I found this image on Pinterest of this girl just kind of sitting and hanging out. Um, and I also found a few different um, reference images of bats and things like that so that I don't end up drawing something that's not a bat. Uh, it's very easy to think that you know what something looks like, but you don't actually have any idea what it looks like. Like, have you ever seen that um, mind game where people will ask you to draw a bike, and then you draw a bike out of out of your head, and uh, you find out that you've totally forgotten what a bike looks like because you have the handlebars connecting wrong, or you have the wheels connected wrong. Um, People think that they know what things look like because we see sort of basic symbols of stuff in our heads So that's why it's really important to use reference for things that we're not super super familiar with um, Because it takes away the preconceived notions that we have of what something looks like and kind of forces us to look at the reality of what the thing is um, Bikes do have too many complicated poles going everywhere. I agree <laughs> uh, so yeah, I've got my, my little bat reference images, so that'll be helpful. Um, I don't have a way to keep those up on screen, and I don't think that they're interesting enough for me to need to bother doing that. So I'm just going to keep my phone down here to look at it. Um, I do want to share this. This is called a bumblebee bat, apparently. I didn't fact check this. I don't know if this is just a baby bat that somebody put into a post and was like, look at this rare breed of bat. But look how tiny and cute it is. I think bats are adorable. <laughs> like. If I could have a bat as a pet, I would have a bat as a pet. <laughs> anyway, let's go ahead and get started. <laughs> Sarah Smidgens asks, hey, comment section, who's here for the first time and who was here last week? I will second that question. And let's go ahead and get started drawing. I'm going to go ahead and make a palette. I was going to go ahead and make a palette... Um, 
my screen's going to disappear for a second. Hold on. I was going to make a palette beforehand, but I was afraid that because you can see the top right side of my screen that you would be able to see what the colors were before I revealed them, but I feel like that doesn't even really matter all that much because I reveal the colors all at once this week anyway. I'm still trying to figure this kind of stuff out. <laughs> I'm still figuring out how I want to uh, do these streams. <laughs> Magarama says she wasn't here last week because she's a bad friend. You are not a bad friend. You're a good friend. I understand stuff happens. <laughs> I don't even know, even know if I'm going to be able to be here every week. But so far we have a two-week streak, so... <laughs> Okay, so for for Chris, uh, Chris just left a comment. For Chris and anybody else who has not joined the live stream before, this is sort of a weekly challenge that I'm starting to give myself where I, um, I've been putting up on Instagram questions about color palettes and um, textures or elements or words or just things that I, I can use for drawing a character design. So far it's just been character designs. At some point I might do environment designs or something else, but right now it's just been character designs. Um, and then you guys who follow me on Instagram at Studio Hana Art <laughs> uh, get to vote on what I'll be drawing. So last week I drew a I don't remember what all the criteria were, but it's it's on my channel. It's saved, so uh, that should be pretty easy to find. But I drew sort of a, a robot girl, and she turned out pretty well, you know, for just coming off with the top of my head, but I also struggled a little bit with her, mostly because of the horrible color palette that you guys chose for me. Thanks. <laughs> but, uh... Also because it is nice having reference for things. I, I was kind of making her off the top of my head, but because I was, I, I'm drawing somebody based off of a bat this time, I felt like I wanted to, you know, see a little bit more of, excuse me, of what an actual bat might look like. And just the girl will sort of help me get the pose so that I'm not struggling and taking up too much time. So I'm gonna start sort of just sketching her in. So you get to see the super, super messy parts of drawing. <laughs> Is it going to be a girl with a furry bat theme to it? I'm, I think I want her to be sort of a, I don't know if she's going to be an anthropomorphic kind of bat yet, or I think, I don't know. I feel like she's going to end up somewhat anthropomorphized, but I don't know how bat-like I want to make her just yet. Um, I feel like that won't matter too much except for when I get to the face, because I could either go the route of having her have a very human face, um, but have sort of more of a more bat feature than things, or I could go the route of giving her a very bat-like face. I don't know. If anybody has any opinions about which of those directions they think I should go, then let me know in the chat. There is kind of a part of me that wishes that I could have the reference up on the screen while I'm drawing it, just for people who are curious about whether I'm doing it right. <laughs> Or just want to see the differences that I make in it and stuff. Maybe I'll do that for future live streams, but I'll have to I'll have to kind of figure out how to do that. My technology here is slightly limited, so uh, I have to kind of do with what I have. <laughs> I feel like there was a movie with bats in it that I saw when I was a kid. And I keep thinking about those characters, but I can't remember what the movie was. Does anybody else remember a movie about, like, bat people <laughs> that came out? Let's see, it would have come out either in the 90s, early 2000s, or before that. 
because for all I know it might have been an old movie when I even first saw it. So I do think that bats are super, super cute. But when I say that, I'm usually thinking of um, certain types of bats that the ones that look a little bit more fox-like or wolf-like um because i've definitely seen some ugly bats <laughs> the ones that look like their noses are like open to the world they're just they're not very appealing at all yes sarah smidgen's an animated film is what i was thinking about i don't remember if like, I know that the film exists, I just don't remember what it was called or anything about it. <laughs> okay, I think I'm, I'm, I don't know, I don't know if I want to do more of a human face or not. I'm, I'm going to save that for later. <laughs> I'm going to keep kind of trying to uh, put the general pose in here. Oh, I could also, so bats, wings, or bats, bats are mammals, so bats' wings are similar to human hands, so um, when they hold out their wings like this, they, they move and work this way, only they have extremely long fingers, and then they have the flaps of skin between the fingers and between this last finger and like the elbow and the, the hip area, which is what makes the wings. So if I'm gonna draw the bat girl, I think I'm gonna make her arms her wings, which means that I will have to change the pose slightly. Hmm, I guess one of her fingers, okay, it's creepy when I say fingers and I draw this long line. <laughs> I don't like that. Um, that's what it's, that's what it's gonna look like. It's gonna have long, creepy fingers. It's just what happens. It's nature. It's fine. <laughs> Anastasia has- Anastasia does have a bat. I feel like every time I try to do a Russian accent, I just end up sounding like the bat from Anastasia. <laughs> um... So when I'm drawing bat slash dragon wings or umbrellas or anything that is like a, a frame that has taut fabric or skin over it, I always get really confused about what direction the skin is supposed to be going. <laughs> um, so this is going to be a fun adventure. Anastasia Bat had a spin-off film called Bartok the Magnificent. I do remember that existing. Um, it's not the film that I'm thinking of, but I, I do remember Bartok the Magnificent. <laughs> I don't know if I saw that one when it came out. I feel like I saw it years later, like way later. Maybe when I was in college. It, it probably uh, was something that I spotted and went, oh, I remember, I remember Anastasia. I feel nostalgia and I want to experience more of it, only slightly, slightly new. And that's probably when I watched it. I just remember it being really weird and not quite up to the same standard that the Anastasia movie was, so. But it wasn't that one. Um, I feel like it was called, like, Star something. I think it was based off of a children's novel. It's going to drive me crazy. I am going to have to look it up at some point. <laughs> Figure out what on earth this is that I'm thinking of. Let's draw the long fingers again. I don't know why I don't know why saying the long fingers while I'm drawing these is kind of giving me the heebie-jeebies. <laughs> Oh, 
also feel like I'm drawing these wings really badly. It's fine. It's fine. Kind of a sketch. It's just a character design. It's an idea. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's fine. <laughs> now in the reference picture that I have, um, the girl is wearing sort of this, uh, this sweater with a really big neck. So I think that it was actually what I originally saw that made me um, choose that photo because it reminded me a little bit of the fur that bats have around their necks. Bats also have weird toes. <laughs> I don't know, do I want to give her crazy bat toes? Should I give her crazy bat toes or should I give her more like human feet? I'm leaning the human feet direction. But I'm curious to know what you guys think. Let's see, let's sort of add the shape to sort of show where the the cowl slash the fur will go. I think I'm gonna make her face a little bit more human-like. I'll give it a slightly beast-like quality to it, um, because otherwise it's just not going to match the rest of the design, but... But I don't really want to go full beasty with this one. Should I give her hair? Hmm. Let's see what bats look like. They're just really fluffy. They're just really fluffy and cute. Like, look at it. <laughs> it's so precious. <laughs> it's funny looking through um, reference photos for things. I didn't realize that there were pink bats. <laughs> I always think of them as being brown or black. But I kept finding pictures of pink ones and it was kind of strange realizing that they were the different colors okay it's gonna disappear again because my uh apple pencil unpaired how dare it <laughs> there are yeah like there let's see so the picture that i just showed this bat is sort of a yellowish color but has these pink spotted wings i think this bat looks really cool it is a cool looking bat. Um, and then there was another picture that I found. Yeah, I have this one saved too. This might be the same bat. At least it's the same, it must be the same breed of bat though. Um, but like, I don't think it's an albino because then it would have pink eyes, wouldn't it? Am I right about that? Maybe it's like that for other animals, but it's not like that for bats. I have no idea. But yeah, pink, pink bats. <laughs> Nature is constantly surprising me. Okay, we're gonna make the screen come back now and I will keep drawing a little, little bat child here. I'm actually going to give her shoes. I kind of wanna give her an interesting outfit of some kind. I don't know exactly what it will be. Hmm. But I feel like if I'm mixing the sort of human aspect and the bat aspect, I need to be careful to uh, give both of those sides of her maybe not equal uh, weight, but she needs to be balanced in her design. So I think if, um, if I'm giving her more of a human face, I should probably give her some more human-esque qualities so that she doesn't end up looking off, you know? So let's see, her other foot ended up being mostly covered by her wing, but a little bit of it is peeking out here. So I'm gonna go ahead and make sure that's showing. Um, think, 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 think. Okay, I am gonna give her hair let me know in the comments, should she have a short haircut or should she have a long haircut? Let me know. I'll go with the majority. 
I will not give her a mullet or a mohawk. Maybe I'll give her a mohawk, not a mullet. <laughs> I know that it's not the fall anymore, but whenever I think bats, I think fall. So there's a part of me that keeps wanting to draw her wearing very fall looking, <laughs> uh, looking clothes. And I will, why not? So I'll give her like, I don't know, some kind of leggings here and these these socks. So if I was doing a serious character design and not just like, oh, let's do a challenge, I would be doing a lot more research on different types of bats. I would be doing a lot more um, variations of what she could look like, different costumes, different types of wings, different hair lengths and hairstyles. So uh, I call these character design challenges because they technically are, but they are not, uh, like this is not the full process of what I would be doing if say I was hired to do character designs. Just for anybody who's curious to know that. <laughs> we are almost at the point where I'm comfortable starting like the actual inking process but it looks like in the chat short short and gelled back like spike from buffy <laughs> i mean why not okay let's do okay she's gonna get kind of a gelled back look but it's not gonna be exactly spike but yeah i'm gonna give her a sort of short hairstyle let's kind of give her some flippy bangs here And let's see, what shape do I want this to be? That's kind of a fun shape. That echoes the shape of her ears a little bit. Um, I think it's a little bit too close to the same size as her ears though, so in order to give it some more uh, variation in the design, I'm gonna go ahead and make her ears a tiny bit smaller. I am kind of basing her off of a, um, I guess they're a type of fruit bat. I didn't actually look up what types of bats these were. <laughs> I just figured, uh, whatever these are. So you can see, like, this reference image has, this bat has very tiny little ears. Some bats have giant ears. But those are tiny. So that makes sense for the design of this character. not sure how I feel about the shape that I gave it here. Me. Okay, no. I'm actually going to start that over again. Dun, 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 dun. I still am going to, I'm going to keep the hair flippy. I like the hair flippy. <laughs> this is just starting, like, it looks like a hot mess. I promise I can see what I'm doing enough. <laughs> I think I want to make her hair even shorter than I had it there. more like that. Yeah, I like that much better. Much better. Okay, excellent. I feel like she's gonna end up having kind of like a sassy, what in the world are you doing? Kind of a look on her face. Okay, and at this point, I'm going to go ahead and move to sort of inking. Um, I'm going to use the darkest brown. I've done, and I have seen other people do, drawings where the lines are lighter than the rest of the drawing, and it that can be done really nicely. I've seen people who do very strange um, colors for 
character drawings and things like that for the for the line work. But whenever I've done it myself, it's it's difficult because I guess I'm so used to working in black and white and seeing black outlines for things. Has anybody else figured or has anybody figured out what that um, movie that I'm thinking about is yet? <laughs> I really want to know. Like I want to give her pretty thick eyebrows. Oh no, I'm going to have to erase slightly. How inconvenient. <laughs> People have asked me how to draw hair before, and I, I need to figure out how to answer that question. Because um, it's something that I've learned how to do better than I used to fairly recently. But it's hard for me to figure out how to explain it. I kind of just um, draw and pray that it works out okay. <laughs> but um, the basics of it are that hair You never want to draw the individual strands of hair. You always kind of want to do it in chunks and then add some details to those chunks uh, in a way where the whole head of hair looks sort of balanced. Sorry, I keep checking the chat just to make sure that I'm not missing anything. <laughs> I'm not. So last week I showed the screen, I showed myself and I showed the screen as I was drawing, but I didn't, what do you mean battery is low? I just charged you. <laughs> um, the, what was I saying? What was I saying? I'm so easily distracted. last week you could see me drawing and you could see what was on the screen over here but you couldn't see me as i was drawing so um i've sort of zoomed back a little bit more and i'm being a little bit more casual with like this in my lap and everything um kind of in the hopes that say when i stop and i just sort of twirl my pencil and i'm thinking about something that you can sort of see that rather than going hmm, why isn't she drawing why isn't she doing anything I'm here for a reason. <laughs> there was a movie that came out over the weekend, um, it was a, I don't think, I don't know if it was a Studio Ghibli film or if it was just a, an anime movie that came out. It was called Modest Heroes, but it was only showing for, I think, two days at theaters. And then, I guess it's one of those, and then it will go away forever sort of deals. Um, I kind of really wanted to see it, but I ended up not going <laughs> And I'm a little sad that I didn't. Um, and I was also thinking about going to go see the Spider-Verse movie because that looks really good and has gotten some excellent reviews from people that I trust to know 
if a movie is good or not. But I didn't go and see that one either. <laughs> I don't know how long, how much longer that one's going to be in theaters, but I definitely want to see it before it's, uh, it's gone. Like her eyebrow got a little bit too big here. <laughs> okay, there's something off about her face, but I'm gonna wait until later to fix that. I'm just gonna uh, I'm gonna keep going here for a minute. The Spider Verse film looks really weird with how it's animated, says Chris. I agree. <laughs> I actually was not sure how I felt about it. Um, when I first saw the commercial for it, because that style of animation, it really kind of throws me a little bit. Um, but it has enough reviews from people saying that it was really, really well done and that the story was good and everything that I'm willing to give it a shot, even though the animation kind of weirds me out a little bit. <laughs> um... Animation is one of those things that won't necessarily make or break a film for me, but it's a really big part of it because I'm I really like animated films and I'm really interested in animation. So if something is animated badly, which I'm not saying that this film is, um, but if something if something is animated badly, it takes away a pretty significant amount of the enjoyment that I can get from the film. So when there's a style of animation, like in the Spider-Verse movie, that I'm just not used to, that I'm not completely sure about, it it makes me feel like I might be, get distracted while watching the movie. But at the same time, if the story is good enough and the characters are intriguing enough, there will be a point when I just kind of stop thinking about the animation and I'm just enthralled in the story. So that's kind of what I was uh, was hoping, or am hoping, that it will be like, Ah, oh, Sarah saw it without me. <laughs> I will go and see it soon. Ugh. Maybe I'll go see it this weekend. Sarah Smidgens does say it was trippy. So do you have any any uh, ex explanations for why that is? Was it just the animation or were there scenes that were particularly uh, trippy, I guess? I couldn't think of another word. <laughs> I couldn't think of a synonym that, that made sense in that context. is also not how bat fingers work because this looks like not fingers and they wouldn't have any stiffness so that this bat could fly but that's okay because i'm the artist and <laughs> i do what i want <laughs> Uh, so many words suddenly the screen's also like really far away from me so it's hard for me to actually read what's going on in the chat from where i'm sitting that's something else i'm going to need to fix for future streams but this is fine oh yeah beowulf that i never saw that one but i did see like some of the the shots from it that one also looked kind of weird but yeah that's that's the effect that i feel like i would probably get from the Spider-Verse movie. Like, maybe at first I'll kind of feel eh and then get used to it. Um, Sarah Smidgen says the animation was like 2D, 3D, and stop motion all at the same time with lots of comic book colors and textures. Yeah, I... That's both intriguing because it's different and also distressing 
because it's different. <laughs> I'll definitely check it out sometime though. It does have really good reviews from pretty much 100% of everyone that I've talked to about it. Something I have been watching recently um, is, oh, what is it called? Uh, Call the Midwife on Netflix. I'm not exactly sure why. <laughs> it's a show that I started watching back when it first came out. Um, I saw the first two episodes or so, but I think I was a little bit too stressed by it and I didn't really want to watch it because there's a lot of, like, women giving birth and screaming about it and I was like nah, no don't want that but um seven seasons later I've gotten to the point where I'm like no this could be an interesting story I want to see what happens so I think I watched up to I'm somewhere in the third season at this point um it's pretty interesting I've been enjoying it So that's kind of been my thing recently. And then of course, um, Mob Psycho 100 season two has started. So I'm watching that with some friends and that, I love that series. It is a weird, weird, weird show, but I love it. <laughs> and then of course, My Hero Academia. I'm midway-ish through season three, I believe. There's just so many good shows to watch. <laughs> so many good shows and movies that people have made. So this is one of those sections that if I actually go back and kind of study how um, bat wings or umbrellas or things work, I'll probably be horrified at my lack of knowledge of <laughs> jollies. But I was, um, I was drawing that second, or that, I guess, that fourth finger and kind of realized that if the um, the skin of the wing was taut enough it would actually kind of cave back in and make a what is it a convex shape is that what it is when the when like the shape goes inward instead of outward i don't know someone someone on the internet will find this video and write it in some comics <laughs> um should you watch she-ra on netflix i still have to finish troll hunters i I enjoyed concave. Concave, yes. Convex is when it sticks out. Concave is when it goes in. Thank you, Chris. <laughs> um, so, wait, what was the question? I enjoyed She-Ra. I thought it was really cute. Um, there were things about it that reminded me of shows that I grew up watching, which I enjoyed. Like, I never watched the original She-Ra, so... Um, but just in general, that the the types of Saturday morning cartoons and things that I used to enjoy when I was a kid. So it had this this interesting nostalgic flavor to it, and of course, like the character designs are really good, and it's it's, it's written very well. I, I enjoyed it. Um, Troll Hunters is also really good. <laughs> That's something else I was watching recently. Actually, is the um, the sequel to Troll, uh, not the sequel to Troll Hunters, the, um, what would it be called? The, here I am forgetting words again. Okay, the word that means, it's not a sequel, but it is a spin-off. Spin-off is the word I was looking for. So yeah, um, Three Below, 
is the the spin-off of Troll Hunters, and I did recently finish that one too. Um, only when I talk about Netflix shows that I've watched do I realize how much Netflix I watch. <laughs> Ugh. In my defense, I'm usually doodling while watching these shows, although not when it's an animated show, because then I'm studying the animation and appreciating the character designs and all that. I have a very strong feeling that I'm going to have to go and uh, modify a couple of things once I turn this blue layer off because there's some areas uh, that I'm getting a little bit confused <laughs> like there's too much going on and I can't figure out what's what's what so uh, I'm almost at that point maybe I'm at that point now see look how different it looks when I take away all the structure lines Okay, we're gonna work with this. Let's scoot chair up a little bit more. So she's a tad more centered. I think one of my favorite parts of drawing anything is the point when, it's probably about this point. Um, when I have the structure finished and I've kind of gotten the main details drawn and I get to draw like the detail details. They're my favorite part. <laughs> For anybody watching, if you draw, what is your favorite part of drawing? Is it the beginning when everything is kind of fresh and new or is it the details or do you enjoy uh, the research part of it, that also counts. Like, what, what is your, your favorite part of doing a drawing? Because mine is definitely the detail details. Also, this fur around her collar, do you think that this is part of her clothes or do you think that that's just her fur? Because <laughs> I don't know. That might completely depend on how I color her. Like if I give her shirt a color and I make the fur that color, it's definitely part of her shirt. But if I make her shirt one color and then the fur the same color as her body, then it's definitely, as Sarah Smidgen says, chest hair. <laughs> What do shoes look like? <laughs> this is one of those moments where I, I doubt everything that I know. It's like I've worn shoes my whole life and yet when I'm drawing them, I'm suddenly panicking over what shoes look like. <laughs> Is this what shoes look like? Let me know in the comments. <laughs> Aw, thanks Chris. He says, I can't believe the perspective is looking totally fine when you just blast it out in one go like that. I appreciate that. Um, it does help that I had a reference drawing, um, or a reference photo. It helps that I had a reference photo. 
because the perspective is already correct in the photo so it's just sort of a matter of copying the um, the angles and things that I can see okay 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 hold up <laughs> I'm seeing that with the way that her fingers on her anatomical right hand are, I either need to show more of them down here in this part, or I need to have them somehow like curve back out again in this area. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. I'm, uh, I'm going to go for option number two. I don't really know why. But I've made my decision and I'm going to stick with it unless I change my mind. <laughs> Let's see. Chris has a question. Do you imagine the primitive shapes that make up the structure or are you using your visual memory for that? Um, do you mean drawing as in like the primitive shapes like um, drawing spheres and... Uh, boxes and things like that to to come up with the body structure because yes and no <laughs> um so if you're saying what i think you're asking um just for everybody else a lot of the times when you are looking at drawing books they'll teach you how to draw um using simple 3d shapes so say if you're going to draw a person, they might say, oh, you know, make sure that you're, you're drawing your uh, sphere and that you're drawing your box and uh, kind of using simple shapes. And this is really helpful in to a degree because it kind of teaches you how to put a more complex shape into simpler terms um, but it can be a, lim a little bit limited in that answering questions live is very very disconcerting <laughs> what was I saying it's a little bit limited in that when you're drawing something that's more organic like say these wings um, it's harder to break it down into those types of shapes. So when I'm drawing from my memory, when I'm drawing from my mind, sometimes I'll use certain shapes like this. I don't do it very often though. Um, when I draw from reference though, I'm looking at the angles, almost like flat shapes of different sections. So say you're, say if you're drawing me the way that I'm sitting right now, if you look at the shape of my shoulder to my elbow to my hand and then back to my shoulder, that's making a triangular shape. And if I can judge the, the angles that these lines are making, then I can draw that triangle on my paper. And then if I say something like, well, this elbow, if I draw an, an imaginary line from this elbow to this elbow, and then I draw up to this shoulder and then back to this other shoulder, you get kind of like a weird four-sided shape. Um, so, yeah, so the negative space guides you through it. Yeah, exactly. Um, and kind of just trying to, to make sure that you're... Let's see if I can show this again. So I'm going to show her again. You guys get an extra little drawing. Drawing tidbits. Yay! Wait, what time is it? Okay, it's 8.04. I do want to wrap this up somewhat soon so uh but I'll, I'll say this really quick though so when i'm drawing these shapes i'm paying a lot of attention to oh stop with the hidden layers guys <laughs> um, i'm paying a lot of attention to things like okay this is this angle this is this angle uh, and then the slope of her back follows this angle her leg follows this angle and so i'm seeing these shapes these sort of flat shapes that she's making um, and that helps me gauge whether the proportions are correct. And then, of course, if I'm drawing from a photograph, then the the angles are going to be correct as long as I can faithfully represent them. So in my head, if I'm drawing her, I'm seeing something almost almost flat and geometric that's representing something 3D. So that's kind of in my brain what she looks like and then I just keep adding more details and keep adding more uh, curved shapes and things that help me out 
Hopefully that makes sense. If it didn't, then maybe I'll try to come up with a, like a more concise way of saying it and put it into a video later. I actually do have a series um, that I'm making about drawing fundamentals, and that's something that I talk about in the first lesson, I think. Yeah. <laughs> it's hidden layers again, guys. Ah. <laughs> Okay, so we're going to try to finish her up here real quick. I'm going to go ahead and thicken some of these outlines. Right now, a lot of her outlines are a very similar thickness. Um, I'm actually going to do this on a separate layer so I can show you. So I have her, her outlines here on one layer, and then I have a new layer now that I'm going to start doing some, uh, some more details and some line thickening on. So the reason that I do this is just because it, uh, it gives it a little bit more dimension than if all the lines are the same width. I feel like you see this in animated cartoons a lot where the, the outlines are sort of one thickness and then the detail lines are another thickness. I don't do that completely strictly, like I don't do one outline around the entire character because um, I feel like that flattens the character out a little bit too much but I do like kind of getting getting like say this hair this hair is in front of her ear so I'm kind of making sections of it a little bit thicker so it looks like it's coming out forward in front of the ear a little bit more also her face is real messed up so I am going to fix that <laughs> okay, there's also this part. So right here, I thickened it up a little bit, but not too much. And so instead, I'm going to thicken this area up. And by doing that, it makes it look like this section of the wing is more in front than the other section. I could make her blue and her clothing this neutralish brown tan color or I could make which is probably a little bit more a uh, natural looking and maybe a little bit more of an obvious solution I could make her brown and her clothing could be blue what do you guys think do you have any opinions about that any strong opinions about the color of this bat girl <laughs> Let's see, Chris asked, okay, let's see if I can draw while I'm answering Chris's question. But he asked, did you originally learn by drawing realistic portraits? That's what it seems like with how you approach things. Um, I, pretty much, yes. I, when I first started drawing, um, I kind of just did it for fun. And I didn't care too much about it being realistic. And I honestly was trying to make my, my style more cartoony when I was a kid because that was what I loved. I loved watching Saturday morning cartoons and reading um, children's literature and things that had very cartoony style. And I did have my anime phase as a lot of artists do. <laughs> I drew a lot of it. And um, I, I understood though that I needed, if, if I wanted to have art be a job and not just a hobby that I needed to learn how to draw more realistically and I took some classes at the local art museum um, one of them was taught by this Russian professor who was the toughest teacher that I had had up to that point um, I was in middle school at the time and he would you know tell you when your work was bad, he didn't just praise you and be like, oh, you're doing such a good job. He, like, he would tell you when your work was bad and he would give really, really great advice. And his goal was to try to get us to draw as realistically as possible. He had us sit and draw a uh, medical skeleton for, I think, six hours. Not straight, I think it was three hours one day and then three hours the next day which was the longest time that I had spent probably drawing anything up to that point. 
and it was a really good lesson for me at the time um, because through drawing that I feel like my brain clicked with a few things that I just hadn't realized before and so from then on I tried to learn more how to draw realistically and when I was in um, in college I took a figure drawing class and the teacher for that class uh, I mean, it was also very much about, uh, you know, anatomical studies, making sure that you're drawing very realistically, making sure that you're paying a lot of attention to what you're seeing and not just what you imagine that you're seeing. And that's kind of where I picked up these sorts of um, techniques, I guess. So I didn't fully start out drawing that way, but it's definitely something that I am influenced by now is drawing, trying to draw realistically. Okay, I'm going to fix her face. Oh, first, so uh, I did all the thick, the thickened lines and the uh, little hatching details, which I don't know where I picked that up from, but I, I like to do little hatching details on things. Um, so this is what it looks like with it, and then this is what it looked like before. So with and without. And you can see how just by adding some thicker lines and by adding just little areas of hatching, which, which implies shading, even if it's not technically shading, um, it looks a lot more dimensional. She pops out more, she looks more 3D. So I love doing that with, uh, with the work that I do. I'll go ahead and merge those because here's another secret trick. It's not really a secret, I'm pretty sure every artist does that it, this at one point or another but um, so I'm gonna flip the canvas horizontally boop or maybe I'm not are you gonna flip my canvas horizontally oh I have this tool chosen mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. here we go um, if you flip the canvas horizontally it, it forces you to see something that you've been staring at differently which means it's a lot easier to spot mistakes, like her wonky eye here, which I'm going to now fix before I color her in. I'm just gonna freehand this, so hopefully it won't be a complete disaster. We'll see. I actually kinda wanna draw her eyes, her uh, irises a little bit differently than I do them. Because I like the idea of her having like super pale colored eyes almost. If you are not doing um, digital art, you can kind of achieve the same thing by holding, if you're drawing on paper anyway, by holding the paper up to a light source because then you can see through the paper and you can kind of see what your, your image looks like backwards and uh, fix problems with it <laughs> or notice the problems with it and then fix them let's give her freakishly huge eyelashes because that makes sense <laughs> okay i think that looks better she looks a little bit better now Excellent. All right, we're going to flip her back around again, and oh yeah, that looks way better than it did before. We're going to color her real quick, and then we will be done with this live stream. So if you have any questions for me, then make sure that you get them in now so that I uh, have the time to answer them. Oh, do I want to make her blue or do I want to make her brown? Nobody answered the question in the chat, so now I have to make decisions on my own, you guys. <laughs> um... Let's see, think, 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 think. Actually, I wanna make her blue. I'm gonna make her blue. That was the wrong layer to make blue on. I gotta put this underneath the other layer. Here we go, ah, there we go, perfect. So she will be blue and her clothing will be brown. 
I think that'll be fun. Thanks for coming to the live stream to everybody who's here. I really appreciate it. And I appreciate all of the, um, the interaction in the chat. I really like getting questions and I love talking about art. So <laughs> I love getting art questions. And really any questions or just discussions about movies, TV shows, other stuff. <laughs> oh yeah, your excuse your excuse for not typing in a comment about whether her skin should be blue or not is that you're doing homework. Pfft, who does that? <laughs> no, you're good. You should be doing homework. I actually kind of miss homework. I was one of those people that really liked school. So I, uh, although I'm sure past me would be shaking her head like, no, not homework. Uh, now me kind of really does miss homework and classes and things. I don't think so much for the actual homework itself, but for the structure of school. And I don't know if that's just because it was what I was so used to growing up, you know, having classes and different things and uh, work can be a little bit like that too, but work all seems like it runs together instead of being specified separate tasks. I don't know. I like, I like it being mixed up a little bit. <laughs> Hi, Eric. He says, I'm late, but I'm here. Cool. You're here for the good part. We are now coloring our cute little bat girl. <laughs> uh, there's a part of me that wishes that I had kind of a red color because I would love to give her sort of red tinted hair, but we're sticking with the colors that we have. Oh, I did say at the beginning of the live stream, too, that I was going to stick with only the colors that I have and not use tints and shades, didn't I? Why did I say that? <laughs> Why did I make this terrible decision? <laughs> okay, in that case, that means that I have, let's see, three colors to color her with, one color for her lines, and then I could also use the line color to uh, shade in certain areas or add some more details or something but um i don't know oh yeah we were gonna make we were gonna make that blue fur part of her body right so we're gonna make it blue man and i was so like wow this is such an easier palette than last time i love that why did i make this more difficult for myself why <laughs> I do like a challenge, though. I feel like having fewer choices for your art can actually make you more creative because you have to learn how to work around those choices. If you have an unlimited amount of colors to use, for instance, you don't have to be as creative because you have so many more choices to work with. So you don't have to think as much about like solving problems. You just sort of can do whatever you want to. So that's why I never really mind when, like when I'm working with clients and the clients need me to work within really, really specific guidelines, I don't really mind. I don't mind having, having guidelines to follow because it, it makes me think a lot harder about what I can work with. And I feel like I come up with better, better options that way. Why did I not choose more colors? Or why didn't I allow myself to use tints? That's the real question. <laughs> Let's 
So yeah, I think if we make her short fur dark, her skin, her fur, I think she technically has fur, I don't know. Um, if we make her face <laughs> dark like this, I feel like I'm going to like that better. Because then the light color can kind of pop out from it instead of the other way around where you just have the dark sinking back from the overall lightness. Yeah, okay. Okay, I'm liking that. That's good. <laughs> Maybe she's in a room with a lot of water. Maybe she is. Um, I'm going to work around the limited color palette with the... Um... Oh man, I said that I wasn't going to use shades or tints, but I didn't say that I wasn't going to mix colors. I... <laughs> Does that count? Uh... So because I've, I've, I have been asked this question before. So shade is when you add black to a hue. Tints are when you add white to a hue. But when you mix colors in a color palette, it technically means that I could make, say I could make this uh, blue color more opaque or more see-through, and then I could draw on top of like, these colors and get more colors. Okay, that's not gonna do anything because it's the same color, okay. So I could maybe, maybe do that? Is that cheating from my original plan? Is that okay? Am I allowed? Because <laughs> then I could give her some shade. Oh, I am not coloring on the correct layer. Um, she wouldn't look quite so flat. But I think that's actually okay. No, we're just we're just gonna go with the uh, original. Mm, no, maybe we're not. I changed my mind a lot. In case you haven't noticed, <laughs> I also regret choices that I make about drawing. In case you haven't noticed, so I can make the bottom of her boots darker. distresses me that now she's just wearing basically like a khaki uniform <laughs> uh, I wish I had another another like tone of khaki would be excellent if I can't use another if I can't use another color I could at the very least add some more hatching to her so we're going to get some dimension by using just some cross hatching here. And I think that'll help a little bit. Like it's killing some of the details, but in a way I'm okay with that because if something is in shadow, you're not going to be able to see the details of it anyway. So it's it's not uh, breaking my heart too much here. Yeah, I don't like that. Okay, that does help a little bit because it gives some more push and pull. You can also add more details, like stitching on the boots and stuff, but I think we are almost done here. All right, one thing that I like to do near the end of a uh, simple coloring process is to add some highlights. And the highlights don't always necessarily make sense. Uh, they're kind of a way for me to just pop certain areas rather than being 
literal light shining on something. At least the way that I do it. <laughs> I like adding these sort of edge lights to things. Let's give her some spots. I think that would be kind of fun. And it'll add a little bit more uh, variation to what she looks like since we have such a limited color palette here. So I'm going to give her some like spots in her fur and probably on her face a little bit. This may end up being a horrible, horrible idea. <laughs> Let's see if I want to do spots on her face. Let's make him look like little freckles sort of. She just has like a few little little dots. And let's make the tips of her ears. Oh, did my pencil stop being connected now? It did say it was running out of battery earlier, didn't it? Well, we're going to do this. I love working with the Apple Pencil, but it does run out of battery kind of fast. I don't know if that's just me getting into the flow of drawing and feeling like I'm spending a lot less time on the drawing than I actually am. Um, like when I say, let's make this live stream 45 minutes long and then it's like an, more than an hour. <laughs> like what is happening now? I think what I need to do in that case is just adjust my expectations. I think that expecting myself to do this level of drawing in half an hour is not uh, realistic. So we're just going to have longer live streams, you guys. That's fun. <laughs> Hopefully nobody minds. Okay, let's go ahead and give her some little freckles. I don't know if I want to give her like lipstick or not. Mm, let's see. Let's see. Let's see how I feel about this. Uh, it's not bad. Let's see if I just do her bottom lip. Let's see what that looks like. Okay, I like that much better. That makes a lot more sense. Yes. <laughs> Chris says four colors to work with just isn't even humane conditions. I know, right? Why do I do this? Why do I do this to myself? <laughs> But yes, the details part, the part where I get to go in here and add all these little like extra little bits. Oh, I love it so much. It's so fun. <laughs> like, I think my least favorite part of a drawing is kind of like what this picture looks like at the very, not the very beginning. Obviously that just looks like a white screen, but uh, when I had the when I have to draw the structure is probably my least favorite part. doesn't mean that I don't like it or that I don't enjoy it, because I do, but it's uh, it's not as like giddy fun for me as doing the little detail parts. Because <laughs> I love this part. I think it's because it goes from being just a drawing that I'm working on to something that is close to complete and I can start seeing what's been in my head all this time come to life. I do have to say, even though as Chris said, uh, drawing with four colors isn't even humane conditions, because it's not. <laughs> um, I am happier with this color palette than I was with the one from last week. It was still a really fun challenge, but it was definitely a super difficult palette to work with.
to be honest though with all of my um drawing challenges the the colors that i give you guys to vote on on instagram i like having the potential for really terrible color palettes um because it's kind of a fun test for me to see what i can come up with with something that's just horrible uh so there will be i'm sure plenty more terrible color palettes to work with and you guys will have to remind me when i'm complaining about how terrible the color palettes are that i actually like them deep deep down <laughs> Okay, there's a part of me that feels like I could do a lot more with her clothes, but to be honest, I don't have the colors to really do a whole lot more, unless I dipped into the tints and the shades, which I'm not going to do. Mm -mm. Mm -mm -mm -mm. <laughs> so uh, I think we're pretty much done here. What do you guys think? How did it turn out? Did I succeed? Did I succeed in my challenge? <laughs> I'm actually really glad that like bat and furry were two of the options because they just merged so perfectly <laughs> it was really handy <laughs> yeah having a pale pink or gray yes I completely agree I think I would love having a pale pink because um, it's nice mixing cool and warm colors together. And if I had kind of a warm pink with this, I think it would look really nice. But I don't. Arr. Maybe I do like little Batgirl here. Um, so maybe I'll just make her a character and I'll redraw her some other time and play around with different color palettes and stuff. That could be fun. That could be a fun thing to do. I'm sure I'll get a lot of really uh, unique little characters with these drawing challenges, and who knows what I what I can do with them. I'm sure there's a lot of stuff I can do with it. Uh, anyway, it looks like we are done for the night. Thanks to everybody who joined. I really appreciate it. Um, if you want to vote on next week's live drawing, on Wednesdays I'm going to have um, the options up in my story on Instagram, so you can vote for the options then, and then on Thursdays at 7.15 p.m. Eastern Time, I will be doing these live stream drawings using the criteria that you chose. Uh, so make sure that you go to Instagram and that you are following Studio Hana Art so that you can do those. Um, the very first video that I did, it was going to be like Monday voting and Tuesday live drawing, but we switched it for the nerdiest possible reason being that the online role-playing group that I'm part of decided to change our game nights from Thursdays to Tuesdays. So I was like, okay, we'll just we'll just switch it around with live streams. So live streams on Thursdays at 7.15. Cool. All right, guys, thanks so much for joining me. I'll be putting this up on Instagram tomorrow, probably. So uh, one of the perks of being here for the actual live stream is you get to see this before everybody else does. And, uh... I will see y'all later. Bye.